All right, time to get to work. I'm gonna let you know my plan. I'm gonna reuse the old glass that came with my fish tank lighting system. Uh, I found that I'm gonna use compact fluorescent bulbs. I'm sure you've all seen them. Uh, CFLs, these are the ones I found. Uh, the information I've gathered is you're gonna want at least 5,000 to 10,000 K. K is in Kelvin, that has to do with the uh, spectrum or something, I don't know the exact details on it, but daylight's another big thing, that's what plants need to grow, daylight, makes sense, huh? Uh, I'm running 23 watt bulbs, but they're equivalent to 100 watts, so I got four of them, I'm going to be running 400 watts, which uh, from one theory I found is, general rule of thumb is for planted tanks, you want three to uh, four times the amount of watts per gallon so if I got a 75 gallon tank three to four times is going to be 225 to 300 watts per gallon but I've heard that that doesn't really count when you're using compact fluorescence and uh, a big deal they make is uh, Kelvin's you want usually between 5,000 and 10,000 is what I found so these are the highest ones I could find at my local Home Depot or at Lowe's your hardware stores I uh, got my measurement for my tank, got uh, marked out where I'm going to space the lights, and uh, yeah, we're going to take these. I get found some sockets, the generic ones you'll see, you know, hanging around in a shop here or there, wherever. Old houses usually have stuff like this. These ran me like just under two bucks a piece for the, uh, for the stand. The bulbs cost me almost 10 bucks for a two pack so that's probably the biggest vet investment in all this 20 bucks for four bulbs but uh i've got a bunch of lumber laying around so you know i figured i'd be able to piece together something on my own all right got this all set out i'm gonna tie them in run the electric i'll uh get that all started and show you that as well okay now we're ready to start running the electrical and placing uh, everything where it needs to go. Uh, the cardinal rule of carpentry, building, fabrication is always measure twice, cut once. In this case, drill once. Got everything marked out. You can see uh made a few adjustments, re remarked some things, but here's our plan. Got my sockets. I'm going to put it right here. Got a spot for my hot and cold wire. Two holes. Cold wire is designated by the silver Screws, gold indicates the hot, which is the black wire. Uh, a little disclaimer to start, I guess, is I am not a professional electrician. If you don't know what you're doing, don't mess around with this. Get somebody to help you, get a professional to make it for you, but I won't be responsible for anything you screw up. This is just do-it-yourself walkthrough. You better know what you're doing. So I got my holes. I drilled them uh, about halfway through just far enough so that I could see the holes pop out on the other side uh, you don't have to do this but if you drill straight through all the way you're gonna end up splintering the wood and it'll be poking out so uh, I already got about halfway done and uh, next I'll show you the wiring uh, here's a little bonus material for you I'm talking about measure twice cut once in this case drill once I got a bunch of marks here. Changed my mind a couple times. I measured more than twice. But I got it right. Figured everything out. And to go on about the holes. Drilling halfway through from each side. Uh, if you drill, you get a nice clean edge on the side you start drilling from. If you drill all the way through, you're going to end up cracking and chipping and splintering your wood. You end up with a bad spot like that. This way, halfway one side, halfway the other. Nice clean edge on both sides. Not a big deal. Uh, it's going to get covered up by the light socket anyway. At least one side will. So, Kind of just the aesthetics of it. Not really a big deal, but just looks a little better. Here's another little quick tidbit of information for drilling your holes. Uh, I recommend a speed bore or a wood bit, as they're commonly known. They got the, uh, you got your tip on the end here when you start drilling through. That'll come out first, give you your guide hole to go back through from the other side so you don't end up with splinters. I used a half inch bit, um, only running two wires through, a wire in and a wire out, 
to the next one. So you don't need, uh, that's probably too big of holes anyway. But uh, if you don't have that, you can use a hole saw. That'll give you a guide hole for coming back through. That'll go through first, and you'll see this This will poke out first. Come back through the other way. Or just use a regular standard drill bits if you got these. Use a small one, drill a pilot hole, goes through all the, through all the way to the other side. Then use a bigger one, go halfway, halfway. You won't end up with any uh, nasty chunks or splinters taken out of it. All right, started running my electrical. Uh, white wire is your neutral wire, and uh, black is your hot wire. Uh, there's probably more professional ways to do this, but uh, for my purposes, I'm just kind of putting things together from scraps that I have, and uh, I don't see it being a problem. But you know, it's a uh, it's homemade. It's not professional. So I got my hot and my cold, my neutral wires run into my first socket. This is going to be the end of my circuit. So I started here. I've got uh, got my wires running to the next hole. Come up. My uh, white neutral wire. Connecting that to the silver screws. And my black hot wire connecting to the gold screws. That's going to connect that. And then from here, I've got this piece. I'm going to put this one on here. You, uh, you want to bend bend the end of your wire around so that it fits around your screw so that when you tighten it up it pulls on it pulls it tighter if you uh... if you have it the other way around backwards when you tighten up your screw it's going to want to push this wire out so make sure you got it run this way so that when you tighten it up it tightens your wire up with it alright i'm at the second one Gonna finish running the rest of them and I'll show you it all when it's done. Alright, I'm gonna go into a little more detail here about the wiring. When you get the wiring, your sockets, you got your hot run into your hot, neutral to neutral. Uh, when you put it down, make sure you leave enough extra wire here. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here and you're gonna, there's enough room up underneath here to fit the rest of these wires. It gives you some room to work with so you can take it off if you got to replace one or something happens, you never know. But uh, yeah, you just get it on there and then you'll move the wires around and then you'll be able to push it all the way down. Don't you, uh, you get it where you want it, you get it pushed all the way down. I got my lines, going to line it up here, got it all marked out to where it needs to be. But yeah, just make sure you leave enough wire. You know, it might stick up. You'll you'll hold it down with screws. It's that's how you gotta do it. Here's another quick tip: uh, when you're putting your sockets down, or this this can work in a bunch of situations. Uh, my socket usually it goes into a into a box. You'll attach. It comes with screws that fit into a junction box. Uh, I'm I'm drilling mine straight through the wood, so I'm using regular just drywall screws. Any kind of screw will work. But if you're doing it this way, you got to be careful, especially if you're using a power drill. Uh, when you're drilling these down in, this is just plastic. It'll crack. And uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, I got a little tight here using my... There, you can see it now. I got a little tight, so you should use a regular screwdriver to tighten this up. Don't use a power drill. That's what I did here. I ended up cracking it a little bit. It's, it'll still work, but yeah, just something to... Be careful. All right, got my circuit connected, wiring's done. Got my sockets all hooked up, screwed down. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail of about what I did, how I did it, and what I used. Try not to drag on too long, because if you got this far, you should know what you're doing, but I used a uh, 14 gauge wire here. Uh, it's something I had laying around. I put new outlets in my garage, this is stuff I had, so. You could go as low as 16 gauge. I think even 18 gauge would be all right if you're not running too many watts, less than 100 watts. But I went out and got a uh, replacement cord. It's 16 gauge, so I didn't need to use the 14 gauge. But uh, I'm actually thinking about taking this back and just using an old extension cord because that's all you really need. All you need is the, the plug end. And if you buy one, it comes spliced or uh, you know, measured off, ends cut off, ready to go. But uh, for the price, I might as well just use an old extension cord take that back. But uh, 
here's the end of my circuit. You know, got my uh, neutral wires and hot wires running together at the end. I saved a bit because this is where I'm going to connect it to my plug. Uh, I left a whole lot of extra here because you never know how much you're going to need. Better to have too much than not enough, right? But uh, that's where we're going from here. Uh, now that after I've done it, I might have changed things. I might have used a, a solid wire uh, and maybe only drilled one hole here in the middle because underneath here you got plenty of room for extra wire. Uh, I just did it this way. I don't know. Kind of made it more complicated than it really needed to be. But uh, you get the basic gist of it there. Uh, over here, we're going to go back to you know, screwing things down too tight. You crack it. That is something you can live with. But, uh, you know, I was a little overconfident. Use a power drill. What I do? I really messed up. Cracked the whole thing. Broke it. Because it's just plastic. Some of them might be ceramic. But even the ceramic ones will break. You tighten it down too much. So what I did, I had some super glue. I was able to save this. In the end, this whole thing is going to get painted white to reflect the light off of it. Uh, so some super glue and it holds it together. That'll work. Just make sure you don't tighten it down too tight or else you really screw it up and break it. Now we're going to finish wiring the new light fixture. Uh, this is just going to be a demo run just to test it out and make sure the lights work. Um, I did decide not to use the replacement cord I bought. This thing's probably about 13, 14 bucks I think is what it cost me. Instead I'm going to use an old extension cord I have. Uh, the nice thing about this is that it will give you the black and white wires but it's really not necessary for the cost especially if you have an extra extension cord lying around. If you don't have an extra one it's still cheaper to buy one. They're going to cost you probably around five or six bucks depending on how long you want it. But that's what we're going to use to it. Cut it off. This I can put a plug on this end, rewire it, and I'll still have a little mini extension cord. And that piece will cost me a buck or two. But what we need now is the plug end of it. And if you're going to rewire a plug, what you need to know is that you got two different size blades on here on the plug. You got your wide blade and your thin blade. The thin blade is, uh, when wired correctly, is always going to be your hot. So this is going to be your black wire. Your wider blade, hopefully you can uh, see the difference. If you can't, I'm sure you can look at any plug in your house and it's similar to this. The wide blade is going to be your neutral wire, your white wire. So uh, make sure you hook it up right. I've already traced it out and I've got it marked off. I've got a little twist tie. This is going to be my white wire. And this one's going to be my hot. So you just connect them together. Uh, looking, I knew I had some wire nuts laying around, looking around for them. I ended up finding some old clips I had that I used to nail down my speaker wire when I ran surround sound. So I found these little clips laying around. You know, homemade project. Figured, hey, look what I found. Helps me out. So, nothing really, not necessary, obviously, but there you go. what you do, you just tighten these up. Feel free to tighten them as tight as you can. You're not going to break them, and it's near impossible to over-tighten them. So, I got everything marked off. Now we're going to just plug it in, see if it works. Ta-da! There. Here's my light fixture from before. I, uh, if you don't recognize it, I added some stands so that I had enough gap for my lights. Got them all plugged in. They're all working. So there's the most basic electrical system that you need to hook this thing up. I'll uh, not going to leave it like that. I'll fix it up. You know, I'll probably I'll enclose all this wire and put a junction box in or something. But that's all you need to get it going.